Welcome back to the Nexus Games Europe. We've just seen a spectacular comeback by Team Friends. In fact, this series has been a series of comebacks up to this point because Sweden really made a stand here in that game number one. So I couldn't be more excited to follow right up into game number three. I'm once again being joined by the handsome gentlemen, Tetcher and Bakery. And it is safe to say that this is probably already, after two games, one of the most intense series we've seen all tournament long. And probably the highest level series we have seen all tournament long. Both teams playing fantastically and both teams using their strongest asset yeah. to win the games. And this seems to be a theme with Team Sweden's games over the last, for, uh, pretty much this entire tournament as well, where they've really just managed to step up over and over again to just look better and better and always seem to have a good match with whoever they're up against. And for those of you guys who literally just tuned in and who have not really uh, an idea of what happened to the map video screen. We got you covered. We're going to check it out once more to see which battlegrounds were picked and banned by the respective teams. Team Sweden, they decided that they wouldn't want to play on Black Hearts Bay. And uh, of course, the community could vote before the tournament even started which maps they want to see here. So Black Hearts Bay, Haunted Mines, as fun as those maps are, I think there's still a lot of respect from the respective teams here when it comes to facing those. So we see Sweden here getting double map picks in a row, one time given over by Team France. Now there is a situation where we could be in the same scenario again. France just won the match here where they even gave Sweden the map pick. So potentially for the next map, they may be giving it over to Sweden again. And Sweden, well, what's the next cooldown map, Bakery? <laughs> well, Sweden have the option of first pick, which most teams see as an advantage, or yeah. they can choose map pick. Yes, that's I expect Sweden to pick possibly Tomb and keep going with that Gul'dan map. Should they though? I think it gives a big confidence boost now to Team France that they basically beat the strongest weapon the Swedish team had to deploy. Should they really bank their hopes again on that hero? But at the same time, Team Sweden in Game 1 beat France's strongest weapon, mm. the Zagara. So, yeah. it's time it's like, it's for like the deciding saying, round. Yeah. It's like saying when you have a sword and a shield and someone knocks your shield out of your hand with a hammer, so you're like, okay, shields just don't work against hammers, I'm not going to use a shield. That's the kind of argument of Gul'dan is still good and it still works for them, they just have to adjust their playstyle a bit. Well, let's see if the next map can have an impact on your decisions here. It is going to be Towers of Doom, and uh, this is a very special, a very cool battleground, especially for the viewers out there because Traditionally, we're used to seeing intense and exciting oh, games on this very battleground. Towers of Doom is a map that almost always goes to the late game. And at the same time, it does favor... It, it favors both teams in different ways. So Team France, if they can snowball the early, they can keep uh, control of that bot fort, keep Zagara pushing down mm -hmm. that top lane, then they can have complete map control and they can just snowball the game and make it end early. At the same time, Team Sweden might be thinking, we can deal with that Zagala and we can stall it out to the late game when we have to team fight over the Ultras. And the beauty of Towers of Doom is every fort that gets destroyed by a Zagara split push can be reconquered, if you will. And that is definitely something that could actually benefit Team Sweden and their playstyle a little bit more. That centers around team fights rather than outsmarting and out macro playing your opponents. So the Vikings banned out by Sweden. I believe we saw it once from Team France in our opening week where it wasn't the most successful thing, but when you're on this map, it's still something you want to try and avoid. Picking the Lost Vikings early while many counters are still up is never an ideal move. But picking the Lost Vikings, especially later in the draft or when Team Sweden have denied themselves of counters, can be basically a free win. So I like the decision from Sweden. It maybe wasn't necessary, but it is safest. Looks like there seems to be a Tassar ban coming in from Team France. Yeah. A weapon that they were able to wield very efficiently in the last game when Kirwa actually had one of the strongest performances on that Tracer. So seeing as Sweden had the first ban, we know that they gave map choice over to Team France. Is this still a solid cooldown map, Bakery? Definitely it can be. Uh, it's not a highlight. I wouldn't go out of my way to pick a cooldown. But we saw how much damage Gul'dan was doing to yeah. the forts. That's valuable in towers. We see the sappers and how valuable they are to have control of them and take them early. Well, Gul'dan's fantastic at those. And even just yeah. lane clear, Gul'dan's great at that. So a solid map for him, definitely viable, but not extra strong. And we should talk about also the Gul'dan parallel for at least Braxis and some of the other. Well, we'll talk about that one in a second, but also there's the option for Chromie, who also gets a lot of value on this map. 
All right, Abathur being locked in first, and that is quite the interesting choice because it could be, you know, the pavement, if you will, for heroes like Greymane. Basically, any strong copy targets these days. It could be uh, a Genji, who's still available. Yeah, uh, Abathur, an absolute terror on this map, and that's why the Lost Vikings were banned. The Lost Vikings, actually, one of the few Abathur counters mm -hmm. in the game. How do they counter him? Abathur gets a lot of value from slow pushing, being stuck in that top lane, being able to body soak, having the Locust running down, and then hatting the other lanes, and the melee minions dying very slowly because he is able to shield them. Well, that's something that the Lost Vikings counter because lanes die much faster with the Lost Vikings inbound. It's much harder for Abathur to body soak because they can pressure his body. It's much harder for him to hat soak because they can kill his hat target. So Sweden here getting punished for not putting the priority if they did want that cooldown on it as France pick it up as their first pick along with the top support in the form of Rhaegar, which could have also synergized with whatever Sweden wants to make the hat copy. And it looks like the viewers have found their new favorite here. 63% leaning over towards that hashtag FR win, if you think. By the way, you can still join the votes here as well. If you disagree with the majority here, just type in hashtag SE win and cheer for the Swedish boys if you think they're going to tie it out once again in a 2-2. Now, looks like France wants to make a statement here. You know what? You're not the only team that has a good gold Dan in the roster, right? Yeah. We can show you what we are capable of when playing that hero. I think it's definitely good. It's, as we said, it's a solid hero, and it's good to deny it from Kanuti. But if I was Sweden, I would not be feeling scared. Whoa. The Illidan lock-in. So Illidan against Gul'dan is one of the most fun matchups in the game. It very much comes down to how evasive the Illidan is, because if Gul'dan's able to land his abilities, then a Gul'dan can 1v1 an Illidan, especially if he has a little bit of help. Illidan, though, is a good hero for pressuring backline heroes like Gul'dan in general, and he gives even more global potential if that's the style they want to go for. Now, I always get the impression that when an Illidan is in the mix, it's all a question of how much do you commit to that? How many additional enablers do you add to your roster? Tassadar is still available. Is yeah. it worth picking up, or do you think that would go too one-dimensional? Uh, Tass and Abathur Bakery is, I think there is no kill like overkill, but that might be too much overkill. I think that's overkill, definitely. <laughs> that's committing too hard into that Illidan basket. I do think it's quite scary for them. They might have to pick an Uther because that's one of the few supports left with cleanse and with tools that can save the Illidan. Yeah, that right. would have been another one, but they ban it out themselves. They ban it out themselves, yeah. Interesting. Uther Rhaegar, what's your thoughts on that combo together? Because this could be more denial from France. That is definitely not standard. That yeah. phase into the double healer and two healers that do not complement each other particularly yeah. well. They're both melee. So. But the deny might be worth it. We've also seen, however, if we want to talk about other supports, we have seen pretty much the only scenario she is picked in as an Illidan counter. The Lili has popped up every now and again. And right now, it could in theory be left to a last pick, picking up, say, maybe Arthas and something else in this rotation for Team France. Yeah, Arthas is definitely a hero I would consider as well if I were Team France. Even on the Nubarak, oftentimes when you cocoon Illidan yeah. or you cocoon the main support to enable him, you cocoon the copy target so it just loses duration is always cool. Yeah. The copy itself, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I think I think Arthas is a very scary hero against Illidan. It's one of the only laners that still beats Illidan, even with an Abathur hat, onto that Illidan. So it's picked it up, is. and Sonya as well, another lane that beats the Illidan Abathur. Yeah, Sonya really considered to be a melee bruiser, but she's, as Dreadnought says often, a melee mage a lot of the time. A huge amount of her damage coming from abilities, which Illidan, until later levels, doesn't really have a huge amount of counterplay against. Yeah, not only does Illidan have less resilience against abilities in general, but also he doesn't have a single interrupt to deal with the Sonya. Exactly. So potentially right now, ETC could be the only hero to really put be put against the Sonya, unless they try to go for something like Uther, who's still in the mix. So very interesting here that France have left their last pick open, and this could fit into a second damage dealer, potentially some more ability damage to deal with the Illidan, or they could still lean into something like that Lili or maybe something else with a little bit of blinds. Now, I am very curious to see what Sweden do. Illidan cannot play how we would think yeah. he traditionally plays in this comp. He cannot be that metamorphosis hero. Yeah. No cleanse coming in so far, and they don't go for cleanse oh. at all. They bring out the Li Ming. Okay, so I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Hunt. 
Yep. We're going to see that global play, and we're going to see ETC with a stage dive, who's going to look to force in Stukov Science under, get one kill, reset for Li Ming, and Illidan can wreak havoc in a 5v4. I like it. I think that's the only way that Sweden can play the game right now. We're in a pretty interesting scenario right now where we can't really find the go-to copy target. Is it going to be two Illidans or maybe even two Li Mings? Both are fine. Both are fine. Even two Stukovs isn't terrible. Uh, he's actually pretty decent without any talents. And, and he has a lot of damage on his Oh, he does. <laughs> Which is buffed. And for those that know the app <laughs> the copy, even though it doesn't get talents or heroics, it does, however, get bonus attack and ability power, which is always cool. And yeah. it's Zarya, not going for the Li Ming, but someone who is very good against up-in-your-face heroes. Zarya could be very effective here. Zarya adds a lot of utility, a lot of protection here against the Illidan Onslaught supported by the Li Ming. The question is, does she have enough de-pushing, enough de disengage capabilities. Well, we, we spoke about are fans going to pick a damage dealer or a support, or even another frontliner. And they've actually picked all three in one. It's Zarya. <laughs> I don't think Zarya is very good at disengaging, but Zarya is good at turning. And I think that's what fans might look to do, especially with the Arthas under Sonya. And there is, of course, the splitting potential that we can't forget about, that expulsion zone is such an influential tool, especially on a map like this, where there's actually a couple really solid choke points where you can get the value, including by those bottom mercenary caps. I think you brought up a really good point, Tetra, there as well. If the enemy team has an Abathur, that means their early game defensive capabilities are not really that good. So Azaria might actually try to abuse that, soak up all that tower damage, and deal yep. a lot of damage in return. Drop the shields, yep. push early. Illidan's not also the best counter to that. He's great in lane and great in the late game, but when it comes to Zarya or someone like that, who's all got all her health by the early push, you're going to be in trouble. Tetra, who's going to win that? I uh, I like the Zarya. I'm sticking with the Zarya. Fra team France. Bakery? I, I have to go with Team France as well. I just do not believe in this Illidan pick from Team Sweden. All right. We're going to find out who will reign supreme in the end. Is it going to be Team France or Team Sweden? For now, though, we're going to introduce our players once again for the French side. It is Danatan, not playing Zagara this time, but on the Sonya. Masquerade is wielding the Zarya. Kirwa on that Rhaegar. We see Wonka on the main tank on Arthas. And Ewok is playing the Cool Dan this time. So we see some role switches here. Yeah, and on the side, Team Sweden, we might see that as well with Daikon on the Abatha, Henning playing the Stukov, Scar on the Illidan, Rask on the ETC, and Knuti on the Leaming. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to see how Kirwa went from that Tracer, who was ever so aggressive last game, into the Rega right now. I mean, that's still an aggressive support if you get yeah. the support, so definitely still potential for him to make the plays. In the meantime, we see Arthas being extremely aggressive, and rightfully so, because he has such a substantial amount of protection behind him. Zarya, by the way, not going for Field the Heat. She goes for a rather old-school classic build, the grenades of, uh, to be stacked the more heroes you hit. Yep, definitely a more old-school build. Feel the Heat much more popular, uh, at least recently, but surprisingly good laning. Uh, level 1 here for Sweden. We spoke about how they might be weaker with Abatha, but... Fans failing to capitalize on that so far. And we also see a very interesting one-on-one -on -one matchup in the top lane here with Skoch on the Illidan, constantly reinforced by that Abathur hat, of course, against the Sonya, who traditionally is one of the harder counters to deal with that guy. Now, I think Danatan has played this exactly how he needed to. Mm -hmm. He has let the Illidan push in the wave, and that he is now tanking it before the tower. Illidan completely zoned yeah. right now. And that is, of course, the wonderful thing of freezing a lane and forcing the enemy hero that if he wants to stay close in experience range, he needs to expose himself and come a little bit closer. But it looks like the mind games are now deployed. Illidan goes in, ETC comes in with a stun. Danatan dodges it for now, and with that spin to win, he doesn't have collision, he escapes to safety. Good game sense. The stun probably needed to be saved, but at the same time, fantastic uh, dodging by Danatan. Exactly what he needed to do. So we see early zappers coming in for Team France. In the meantime, the Swedish team forgot or neglected their own camp, trying to go for a cheeky invade, but unfortunately they were a little bit too late. That's the punishment that you have from the ETC trying that top lane gank. As soon as he showed their fans knew this was an absolutely free uh, Sapper camp, and that's going to have a lot of pressure on his bot lane. 
Yeah, in the meantime, we saw an attempted gank here on Kirwa, but Rengar is not falling that easily, at least for now. Now, Sweden, they need to punch their way through. ETC and Li Ming were able to interrupt the channeling process here for now. Kirwa dropping the healing totem a little bit close to the enemy team, so Li Ming's abilities could actually destroy it. But as it is, it won't even be needed too, too much. Abathur, in the meantime, channeling the right altar. Illidan going for the left one. Uh, Kanuti somehow going okay. down under the fort. That's not something I expected to see, but at the same time on the top lane, we did see yep. Abathur secure the home one, and ETC and Illidan secure the one on the left. Sonya getting ganked, but they cannot fort dive. Exactly. That was a surprising amount of control provided by the Swedish team. We talked about the early game weaknesses potentially that an Abathur roster had to face, but they were the ones completely dominating the upper half, getting two altars and establishing themselves a slight lead. And again, we see the penalty for that gank, and it's not paid off. Mm. They've lost the bottom four. Yeah, definitely true. France is just mercilessly punishing all the attention that was put into that top lane without really getting any results in. Now, they're trying to retaliate. Keep in mind, though, that the Bell Tower is going to be under Team France's control very soon, providing additional firepower. And I think Sweden realized that. They're pulling away for now. That mercenary camp, though, is still available. However, Team France now has much more room to move around here. Sonia, all that damage coming in, and Skog needs to teleport back immediately if he wants to maintain his lane in position. Team France is comp working much better so far in this game. Yeah. You can see there the value that Zarya has. They pushed down that fort so fast, and the Vega uh, as well, coming up big on Henning. And they're now trying to put Team Sweden against the ropes here, not allowing them to retreat. The movement speed slow from Wonka is just too much for Stukov to get away from, and that is the drawback of having a support that doesn't have a lot of mobility. Exactly. And Sweden, their comp is not working out. They need to somehow stabilize yep. and be focused on the later game. One, two shots here provided by the Zappers as they cross the line. And it really feels like they're fighting a boxer right now, Team Sweden that is, that is pushing them against the ropes and won't let them out. This bottom lane pressure provided by all those Zappers, provided by that early Bell Tower capture, is such a threat and they really need to find a way to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll give you a hint, it's not the Illidan Abathur <laughs> company yeah. top lane. It's getting absolutely smashed by the Sonya. Mm. It's bad news when Illidan can't even hold his lane with the Abathur on top of it. But big magic damage now raining on Wonka on Arthas. He only has physical armor, so I'm afraid to tell you that you're going to have to try again later on. But in the meantime, that was enough distraction cost, actually. And two altars being channeled with massive cannonball value for the French team. Danatan, maybe our position though, taking a lot of damage. And it goes down. I think that was worth it though. Like the amount of damage they were just able to inflict onto this was definitely worth trading a hero temporarily. And if you still look at the experience overall, Team France is in a commanding lead right now. I think it was probably still worth it. I do agree, but I don't think Sonya needed to be there. So mm. he came down looking for a fight and it's not a fight that I think Team France wanted. And if she had survived, maybe they could have actually stalled the defense for Team Sweden and those Zappers could have punched through, exactly. dealing additional damage on the core. So, Team Sweden securing this bot, uh, bell tower now. Yeah, that's and this a huge chunk of XP. Almost even. This is yeah. such a miracle that I don't think they thought they could get back in the game this quickly. And would you say that Team Sweden is going to hit a massive power spike once level 10 hits? Absolutely. I think that's where their comp starts because it, it didn't stop before 10, clearly. All right, so let's see what both teams are going to bring to the table here at level 10. It's getting a little bit earlier into the mix for Team France. We see the Ancestral coming through. Expulsion zone on the Zarya. No surprises here. Gold Dan takes a little while, but hey, no no reign of destruction yet. Have you ever seen it in competitive play? I have never. I think the boss has actually been aggroed, but it was not mm. uh, by Team France, opting not to take that with the 10 advances, instead looking to re-secure the boss motor. So during a time for uh, or at Team Dignitas was many never like, come on, let me pick a, a little bit of Reign of Destruction. I'm very happy to say he was not. <laughs> All right, so no shenanigans up in this point. The game is way too important here in the semifinals for the Nexus games. Rask, by the way, he went for the Mosh Pit. He's channeling right now on two enemy heroes. The Horrify is good, interrupts it, but Li Ming with all that backline pressure. The Ancestral lands and saves Evo from any further damage in the meantime, though. running the into the fort. He actually yep. goes down. Knuti getting low on the backside, but surviving from the Vega. Low from the dominance, but Wonka, Wonka wants to pull out of position. Illidan 
chasing down. This is exactly what they want. He needs to chase further. Movement speed shield on Zarya gets cover yep. out for now. But Skulls they get another one. They get another. This is exactly what Team Sweden needed. And they go in with a clean triple kill, baby, taking out almost the entire team of Team France. Danatan, though, in the meantime, going for another channel. They're trying to minimize their losses here and salvage the situation. Danatan, very happy to get that channel. Daikon just not quite quick enough on that mine placement. If he would have got that, then this could have been a completely even game for Team Sweden. And we really have to highlight all that team fight power that Sweden was able to deploy here. But I also get the feeling that the positioning for Team France just was very, very bad. As you said, Ewok on the gold end, he ran into the bell tower, who immediately fired upon him. And the additional movement speed and the damage coming in, uh, movement speed slow, excuse me, was just the end of gold end. Yeah, well, I would have liked to see uh, Team France do something maybe a little bit different in the yeah. draft and secure a global for this phase of the game and secure Arthas as the counter matchup to Illidan. Something like a De Hacker Arthas with De Hacker with the four man in the early. It's weird, but I think that's what they needed because just now, Sonya was up dealing with the Illidan. The Illidan instantly moved down, used the hunt for the global, yeah. and it was a 5v4. And that is the power of an Illidan composition. Illidan is one of the best heroes when it comes to dealing with bosses. He even gets reinforced by Abathur and Li Ming. That, of course, leaves a little bit of a time window for Team Friends to open up the bottom lane once more. Zappers are raining down onto that bell tower. Can they? Oh, that one Zapper actually was wasted there, unfortunately. I also want to highlight the Gul'dan once more during that last team fight. His Horrify had to be used to interrupt the Mosh Pit because quite frankly, they don't have any other reliable interrupts when it when the dancing party has started. Expulsion Zone, of course, can be used, but Zarya was in the Mosh Pit. Yeah. Such a fantastic flank from last managed to get Vega and Zarya completely body blocked and still caught in the Mosh Pit. Now, once again, all that pressure in the bottom lane, and this is good for Team France. The next bell tower, the next altar, excuse me, is going to spawn in the bottom lane, and they already established themselves such a strong presence there. Now, Skoch on the other end, he realized he needs to be available for the hunt. Right now, he's out of range. He needs to be able to join in the nick of time, though. And Sonya not making the same mistake. She is now here for this team fight. And Sestu comes yep. down, and it's a big one. Horrify as well. Vas getting so low. Stukov healing, not quite enough. Keeps them alive. The root is good. Ewok now being pressured. Once again, they get the kill on Stukov, though. But in the death zone, it is Danatan who ends up falling as well. Masquerade now, the only person alive to really keep them sustained as Rega was full on cooldowns, but it was a one-for-one one trade. The position, the location of that altar is still favoring Team France. One more grenade by Masquerade could maybe end Li Ming's life, but he's not even willing to commit to it. Abathur Mines, can they distract and delay Wonka once more? No. Oh, they, they actually did. That was a mistake, mistake there, misplay. Yep, they did get the int up, but no more okay. will be coming. Doesn't matter. He worked ready <laughs> to uh, kill any more mines that would be placed down. Team France is securing another small advantage, and they got that bell tower when they were actually down 13 yep. talents. And that's why Sweden could not fight over that altar like they wanted to. Yeah, you could really see how much attention Team Sweden was putting into that top lane with uh, the boss being taken by Abathur, Li Ming, and Illidan. That was just the golden opportunity really for friends to capitalize on the lack of defenses in the bottom lane. Now, in the meantime, the Zappers are being deployed for Team Sweden. With their help, they can probably regain control over the spell tower. And don't forget the poke by Li Ming. And look at Illidan, he's moving down. This means that Team Sweden want to fight. Now they come. come down. Go down, already getting cleansed. I don't know if they can follow. I don't know if they can follow either. However, the Ancestor healing is not available just yet. He had to use... No, the Horrify was actually interrupted, so no major cooldown. Actually, that was quite good for Team Friends. That's actually quite lucky. Yeah, that really lucky. Otherwise, <laughs> we would have been looking at a cooldown trade. Hmm, so what can Team Friends do now? They lost control over the bottom belter. In the meantime, Sonya establishing a strong presence in the top lane. Gregor needs to be careful. Looks like he could get caught. The Arcan Orb not landing a one-man mosh pit, making the doggo dance. And uh, there was a lot of resources invested for that one support kill. It is a lot of resources, but this does secure them the 16 talents by good advantage. Mm. And if they can get something out of this, uh, like maybe two bell towers or another pick, then it's worth it. Yeah, Wonka now needs to find a way to escape. Zarya's shields are helping him a little bit, but the constant slow coming in from Stukov's auto attacks and the level one talent really made it quite a dangerous situation for Arthas to get out of. And look at that. Rengar is still dead for another seven seconds. That basically shuts down any chances of them rotating in time for the bottom and the right uh, altar. It should do, but it is close at the same time. I think Vega might be able to get there uh, for the top right, at least. And Sweden, for some opening. reason, committing hard to the bottom. Yeah. 
I think Team France wants to get only one ultra right now. They realize, ne never mind, I think they try to poke and delay the progress on that right hand ultra. Abathur in a lot of trouble, uses the copy immediately. Is it going to be enough though? No, Illidan ends up falling. And keep in mind, Abathur, after the copy goes down, he's going to spawn right there. I'm not sure if the sweet, uh, oh. Team France know that they, oh, it looked like they didn't spear off cooldown in oh, maybe two no seconds. Way. Danatan is committed to the Poison Spear, man. Easy peasy, the slugger life is not meant to continue this time around. ETC's Mosh Pit still on cooldown. They used it earlier. Beautiful one-man horror fight, totally worth it. It is a three-for-one trade bakery. Vast Clidden, he wanted that int up, but it was too greedy. Yeah, definitely a little bit too greedy. Speed barrier, providing wonderful movement speed to Arthas, which is definitely something he's happy for. Keep in mind though, Wonka, he was actually misplaying that. I think he's dead still trying to heal himself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kanuti making the place when Sweden Ooh. needed him again. And th this could be Sweden back in the game. Th they get another he gets reset. Another one. I think they have to abandon the mercenary camp now as well. That was unexpected. Team Sweden showing up when it's really needed. Kanuti is my highlight Ooh. player of this entire tournament. He is absolutely carrying Team Sweden again, as we can see. Well, we can basically call him Sir Kanuti right now that united him. So. <laughs> Doesn't happen all day, ladies and gentlemen, that Bakery praises a, a player that much. But I love it, and I couldn't agree more. Knuti single-handedly just brought Sweden back in the game. That that honestly could have been the end of the game right now. But mm. Knuti saying, no, I refuse to lose. I refuse to lose. Now, another relatively aggressive Swedish player here going for the boss. I'm not sure if they are aware that the entire French team is here and waiting, trying to pounce onto an oblivious Swedish team. Rast is only scouting right now. Arthas on the point. The silence comes through. The explosion is stronger though. And France steals the boss. Four more points of damage onto the Swedish core. The hard fight misses. Vega pull up, up by the yeah. uh, by the Illidan though. And they do not get picked. Yeah, that's huge. The fact that Kirwa was able to survive there, shutting down all combo uh, reset combos for uh, Li Ming was super important and perfect timing now for Team France. Everybody is so hold that thought though. Li Ming shutting down Rhaegar and then he gets up falling there as well. Li Ming still alive. It didn't do a lot of damage in the back. There is that. no support on the side of Team France. Uh, Zaya also caught up, but uh, Arthas uh -oh. as well, and he ends up going down. Huge team fights coming out from both Ooh, sides. That was a pretty hefty bloodbath. It is now a three versus two advantage for Team Sweden, and they really needed this fight to go that well. They're with their backs against the wall. Only three HP left on the core. Looks like this one goes down without France contesting, but they still have multiple wins, uh, winning capabilities here. They need to go for another boss, another zapper camp is enough, or just fr quite frankly, another altar wave. Ideally, the more altars now, the better for France. The saving grace for Team France Freedom is, uh, or Sweden, sorry, is of course that they are ahead in XP, yes. almost one full level. And that's what they need to, because if France hit 20 first, then that could be lights out. Yeah, that is a really good point you bring up there. And that's why France is so determined to force a decision right now. Sonia, massive damage onto Skog, who gets immediately had it and supported by Abathur. Danatan needs to be careful though. One, oh my goodness, a last second save here by Masquerade, preventing the reset from Li Ming, who was going in so aggressively just to be in the safe side of things. Kirwa drops the ancestral healing immediately, and Rask ends up falling in Bakery. This could be lights out for Sweden right now. Danatan actually baiting the whole Ooh. time holding that level 16 stone skin equivalent that whole time just basically being saying blink one more time presses yeah. it at the perfect moment and this could definitely be lights out sappers are traveling down the lane as we speak yeah that is going to be a total of six zappers that the swedish team needs to defend against they have no etc knockback they don't have anything to really keep this lane clear the horror fight goes down Dicarn is completely surrounded by blue heroes and mercenaries on that abathur copy Skok joining the fray as well they're trying to hold it but they can't stukov ends up falling and this could be gg Skok is the last one to fall in one two three boom. they go down onto the swedish core and the french team just showing cool nerves of steel, quite literally, with that Sonya, who basically set the way and set uh, everything in motion to really make them snowball ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Sonya, a fantastic pick, got wow. a lot of value, and as soon as fans worked out what Team Sweden wanted to do, they immediately adapted and they dealt with it fantastically. Completely agree. Absolutely superb play. A small chance that one fight that went well for Sweden at the end, but just not enough. Team France just started getting pick after pick after pick, and by that point, it's over.
Yeah, and we had a lot of highlights in that game, and I'm pretty sure Tetra's going to deliver us a beautiful first one. Oh, yes. So, the first one I have here is the big team fight under bot lane, underneath the bell tower that was happening there, where we immediately see Wonka doing what he's done all game, playing so aggressively. ETC, though, he missed the power side bot bit, gets a walking one. Horrify, as Bakery said, the only tool available to be used. Ancestral, keeping Ewook alive is such a big deal here, allowing him to retreat into enemy territory and drop so much damage. Unfortunately, they do still get closed in. Stuck off silence, and we see Ewok get absolutely destroyed. Nuti, though, does get a dominant stack during that, and that is what keeps him alive versus Kurawa, allowing them to tr attempt to turn around, and they will also get the kill onto Rhaegar and Wonka here as they chase them down. Yeah, and beautiful game sense overall by Knuti throughout the entire game. You could really see how despite the fact that he was sitting at 15% health, he was still going for the aggressive blinking because he realized there was no more cooldowns available for his opponent. And Bakery basically said it all. This guy is a player to be on the lookout for, even maybe for future HCC pickups. Absolutely. I'm, he's someone that I'm going to be watching for sure in this next season of Open Division. And I think his team has a fantastic chance to qualify for the Crucible. Yeah, speaking of yeah. team singularity, of course. Exactly. So the next replay I have is once again in bot lane. Lot seems to happen there on this map, where we had a very interesting fight over the death zone. A huge fight trying to push in here. Horrify, beautiful expulsion zone, keeping the uh, keeping the Li Ming interrupted the entire time here. But we see Sonya going super deep, looking for the Stukov here. Gets expulsion zoned in, then stunned, then knocked back again and she is finally taken out. Really nice moves here by Team Sweden, punishing Sonya for going so deep. They nearly get Arthurs as well. Great moves here indeed, and you could really see how calculated the French team played in that third game of the series. And is it time to say that France basically used Swedish own weapon <laughs> against them? Like, the Gul'dan seems to be the dominant factor of this tournament right now. I think the Gul'dan was definitely strong, but I felt it was more like France had a handle on what Sweden wanted to do. And the yep. Illidan comp, it paid off in that bot lane. You can argue it paid off in that huge team fight level 19 versus 19. But outside of that, it just did yeah. not work. And we saw where sometimes the double Illidan or the double Lee Ming in some cases doesn't work so well with the final replay where Abatha was trying to do something. He was trying to channel, Illidan was trying to delay in that bot lane as well but it just doesn't work. Abatha does everything he can. He thinks if they can get the double Illidan going, that they can turn it around. Instead, Illidan gets destroyed. Sukov arriving just too late. And guess what happens next? Abatha's not in the best position. And gets <laughs> chased all the way down through the death zone. Poison Spear, because cool guys don't look at dead slugs. And Abatha <laughs> gets punished for what was an interesting attempt at the turnaround, but the blow up on Illidan made it a disaster for Team Sweden. All right, so. The French team is looking